Our aim is to upload and save 3D models on our app at runtime. To achieve this, we need first to enable the app to open and save files. In this tutorial, we will learn how to open a file using a native standalone file explorer or a browser at runtime in Unity. In the Unity Hub, open the project from the previous tutorials. In the Unity Editor, let's create the User Interface button that opens the file. In the Hierarchy, right-click, then select UI and Button Text Mesh Pro. Rename the button to Button Underscore Open File. In the Inspector, set its pivot to 0 for the X and 1 for the Y. Set its anchor to top left. I will set the width to 160 and the height to 30. Set the X position to 0 and the Y position to minus 45. Let's zoom in on the button by selecting it in the hierarchy and pressing the F key on the keyboard. In the hierarchy, expand the button game object and select its text object. In the inspector, change the text input to open file. We will use a free Unity package called Unity Standalone File Browser, which is provided by Kogan Kogja. I will leave the package GitHub link in the description. This package enables opening and closing files using a native standalone browser and support for Mac, Windows, Linux, and basic support for WebGL. Let's open the GitHub page by clicking the link in the description and click the download package link. We will install the package we downloaded in the Unity editor by going to Assets, Import Package, and Custom Package. Select the downloaded package and then click Open. Click Import. In the project window, under the Assets folder, we can see a new folder named Standalone File Browser is added. An error related to the plastic.dll may appear at this stage on Windows devices. To resolve it, go to the Edit menu, then Project Settings, then Select Player. Under the other settings, Configurations, untick the Assembly Version Validation option. I am using Mac OS and this option is not available here. OK, let's create a C -sharp script that manages the folder browser opening. In the project window and under the assets folder, open the scripts folder. Right click, then create C -sharp script. Let's name it open file. Let's add the newly created C -sharp file to our scripts game object by selecting the game object and dragging the script file into its inspector area. Double click the open file script to open it in your code editor. In the C -sharp file, let's start with adding some essential namespaces that provide classes and methods useful for the code we are going to add. The system.io provides support to work with files and file paths. The system.txt is used to handle text encoding and conversions. The runtime interop services is useful to work directly with memory. The UI is for the user interface elements in Unity. The SFB is a custom namespace provided by the Unity standalone file browser package we installed. The networking handles network-related tasks, such as creating and managing network connections and sending and receiving data. We don't need the start and update methods, so let's delete them. In the script, we will handle different scenarios of opening files at the runtime. One 
is when we are running our app or game online using the WebGL and the other is when using the native folder explorer on Mac or Windows for instance. We can use if and else statements to check if we are running Unity WebGL and not the Unity editor. Else, we can assume it is the standalone platforms or the Unity editor. You may notice the hash character in front of the if and else statements as well as the end if. It indicates that these statements are directives and they are handled during the compilation process rather than the runtime. During the compilation, we need to find out if we are running with WebGL or something else. This expression is for linking static plugins. It indicates that the method after it is part of an external library or file and should be called. This external file is provided as part of the Unity standalone file browser package that we installed earlier. We will call a method named upload file from that external library. It takes the name of the game object and the method name that get called when the file is uploaded to the browser and a filter if needed to limit the openable files to a specific type. The last parameter is a boolean to allow selecting multiple files. The extern modifier is used to declare a method that is implemented externally. Next, we add a method called onClickOpen. Later, we will link it to the open file button in the Unity editor. So when the button is clicked, this method will be called. This method will call the upload file method over here and pass the name of the game object to which this script is attached. And we will assign the method name that get called when the file is uploaded to the browser. This method name is onFileUpload. We will define this method later. For the filter, I am interested in only opening files of OBJ extension. I also don't need multiple files to be open, so I pass the boolean value of false for that. Now, we will add the method that get called when the file is uploaded to the browser. It is named onFileUpload the same name we have here. When the upload file method is called, it passes the URL of the uploaded file on the browser as a string to the method specified here. This URL is passed as a parameter to this method. When the file get uploaded and this method is called, we will call a coroutine method that we will define later and will call it output routine open. We will pass th this file URL as a parameter to this coroutine method. We went through the meaning of the coroutine method in the tutorial about the address search with Google's photorealistic 3D map in Unity before. Okay, we are done with the WebGL part of the code. Next, we will go through the case of the standalone platforms or the Unity editor. We will have a method similar to this one here with the same name. Inside the method, we will have a variable called paths of type array of strings. It is an array of strings because this is the type returned by this method here, provided by the standalone file browser package we installed earlier. The first parameter of this method is the title of the file explorer window. I will set it to open file, but you can call it anything you like. The second parameter is the default directory. I left this empty because I don't have a particular default folder in mind. The third parameter will take file extension if we want to filter the content to a particular type of file. 
I want to look for OBJ files only, so I'll pass OBJ. Notice that in that method there, we added a dot before the file extension, but here we don't need to. The last parameter is for multiple files selection and I passed false for that because I don't really need to select multiple files at once. Now we can check if the path is valid by checking if the length of the array is longer than zero, meaning there is something that has been returned. If the path is valid, we can create a new URI object using the value stored in the first element of the paths variable. The dot absolute URI property of the URI object returns the entire URL correctly encoded and ready to use as a string value. We will pass this URL string value as a parameter to the coroutine output routine open method that we will create next and will be the same method we called here. Now we can create the output routine open coroutine method that takes the URL of the file location as a parameter. Inside the method, we will create a variable named www of type Unity Web Request. It will be created by passing the URL as a parameter to the Unity Web Requests get method. Then we send the web request using the URL and yield what returned from sending the request. Next, we can check if the request wasn't successful using the not equal expression to the success property of the result property of the Unity Web Request class, meaning if the web request was not successful. Otherwise, if it's successful, it will go through the else block. In case it is not successful, we can debug log the web request error message. But if it is successful, we can debug log the content of the file, which we can access through the text property of the download handler of the Unity web request object or variable. Okay, we are done with the coding part. Let's save the script file and go back to the Unity editor. In the Unity editor, let's assign the onClickOpen method we created in the code to the Open file button. In the hierarchy, select the open file button. Then in the inspector, scroll down to the on click event and click on the plus sign. Then drag the game object containing the code, which is scripts object, to the slot here. We can access all public methods attached in the scripts attached to the game object. Click on the drop down and under open file script, select the on click open method. Let's click play to see the result. Let's also activate the console window to see if the content of the file will show here. Click the open file button. Then you can navigate to the folder location of the OBJ file you like to open. I will leave a link in the description to a model.obj file that you can use. In my case, it is in the download folder. So I will navigate to my obj's folder inside my download folder. Note that based on what we set in the code, the file extension our app is looking for is obj. And the default title of the file explorer is also what we set in the code. I will double click the file to open it. And the contents of the file will show here in the console. Well done. In this tutorial, we learned how to open a file at the runtime in Unity using a standalone file browser.